Hey, uh, Shadur, Joe Rico, My Life Sports Radio. First of all, congratulations. What a fantastic performance by you and your teammates. Can you talk a little bit about some of your feelings <clears throat> pregame, kind of how you thought? I know your father also gave a great pregame speech that I got to witness mm -hmm. kind of, uh, it was amazing. Can you talk a little bit about the focus and the level of intensity prior to the game? Because you guys really showed everyone what you could do. Um, the focus was there all the way. We've been there, we talked about it, we had great preparation, and we knew what we was going to get. So the, when we go out for pregame warm-ups, I'm like, okay, this feel, just give me flashbacks of just uh, things I've seen before. So then we go out there first drive, and I'm like, oh, okay, they not moving different. They not moving way faster than, you know, the um, teams I used to play. So then I'm like, okay, cool. In practice, we getting, we getting a way faster look from the one defense than we get in. So I feel like we just out-schemed them, and we just had a, uh, just a great day. Shador, when you went back on film, you evaluated your own performance, clearly school record 510 passing yards, but how did you feel you played? I feel like it was all right. I feel like it was cool. I feel like I, I missed a lot of stuff. I, we could have bigger numbers and stuff like that. So it's just like, I, I don't really like, I, I watched the game. I, I seen all like the bad clips yesterday and stuff like that, and it left a bad taste in my mouth really about it. So I'm just motivated to get out there and just have more perfection and just a better game. Hey, Shador, Jake Schwann is DMVR. Just wanted to ask you, do you think you're the best quarterback in the country? That's a biased question. Of course I think that. I feel like everybody, I think majority of quarterbacks that's competitive are going to think that. So that's just for everybody to decide. But, of course, personally, I feel like that. Shudor, a lot of you guys are new to Colorado. Do you all feel like you're really bought into this rivalry week, the weight that comes with it? I mean, what's the weight? All it is is game two for us. It's just a focus. We already got game one out the way. Um, that's behind us. I don't even like talking about it, thinking about it no more. We just got to be on to the next thing. So just a preparation factor. And everybody knows, okay, cool, game one, that's fine, but we got to move on from that. So it's going to be, it's gonna be um, more locked in, I'll say, less mistakes. Understand that was our first time playing together and really being in the foxhole with the guys and really understanding I could count on this guy. I could count on the guys around me. I could count on the O-line to be there for me. And really just having that first test with each other. And everybody passed, you know. So it's just time to stop making the same mistakes, and we can't do that again. Mickey uh, Everett, CU Sports Report. You played a phenomenal game on Saturday. You already know that. But as you look at the tape and – kind of see any miscues there. What do you see kind of on the maybe more negative side on how Saturday, like an overall performance? Overall performance, I feel like we got to get in and out the huddle faster. We can't we can't be slow getting to the line of scrimmage. Um, we wasted a timeout, and we know at some point that could come back and haunt us, you know, in a, in a game. So we just can't make those simple mistakes. We can't put the ball on the ground. I got to throw the ball away sometimes. Can't take negative plays. Um, and just understand, okay, in practice, it's, it's going to look the same out there. So understanding, okay, in the game plan, what, whatever we got, we just got to get more reps, more reps at it, make sure everybody is in the right places so my eyes go straight to the reads and stuff like that. Um, and that's it. Pat Rooney, Boulder Daily Camera. Uh, Shador, after the game the other day, Coach mentioned needing to – get more efficiency out of the ground game on offense. After reviewing the, the film, what do you feel like has to happen there? Get the ground game going a little bit more, maybe take the pressure off of you and the, the passing game a little bit? Well, I feel like it's not really no pressure on me, really. It's like every everything we called, it was there. It was just I made the read or I didn't. And that's just some okay, cool, we got to tighten up. We can't miss certain reads. We can't miss that type of stuff. Can't miss certain throws. So the run game is going to be there. We just got to lean on it. And we just we just take what the defense give us. If they're gonna give us, if they're gonna let us throw the ball, we're gonna throw the ball. If they're gonna let us run, we're gonna run. So it's just nobody has um, prior to the game. Nobody knows. Okay, cool. We're gonna go for this. Like we didn't know we was going for 510 yards passing. Like we didn't know that. We'll have many yards 510. I think we didn't know that. It just happened somehow, some way. It just happened. So last time I, we had that many yards was in the scrimmage, the first scrimmage. 
So then it was like, dang, we really went 500. That's crazy. Hey, Shador McMiller, Fox 31. Obviously, you guys set a school record with four receivers, having over 100 yards. Can you take us into all the amount of work that you put in with your guys and also along with Coach Lewis? Because it seemed like he called a great game mm -hmm. and you executed that game plan basically to perfection. Yeah. It was almost perfection. It wasn't. You know, I miss Cover Reed, so that's still haunting me right now, you know. So it's just taking what the defense gives us, honestly, and knowing it's a trust factor with the receivers, knowing that they're going to be in the right places where I need them to be because we talk about everything. Coach, Coach, Coach gets mad because I always talk about the uh, one-off situations, like to where you, you just got to understand they may have just got you that play. That's it. But I like being very detailed and really just having answers for everything the defense does. So just over-preparing, really. So I feel like that's what helped us get to having those numbers in that game. And when you get the ball in an explosive player's hand, that's what happens. And that's not the only – That's just that's, that was just their game this week, this past week. We don't know whose game is going to be next week, week after. So anybody can have any amount of receiving yards. We're not thinking about that. It's more about where the read takes us and just being in the right spots. Shador, Brian Howell from the Bowl of the Daily Camera. Um, you guys now have tape out there that teams can see of this mm -hmm. Colorado team. But do you – you as a student of the game, do you kind of like – the chess match that now goes into it and that you've now got to see what they're going to give you and try to play off of that? No, nah, we, we kind of dictate what they're going to do. Like, we're not thinking about, dang, what they're going to give us. Like, because we already know, we already know what, what most likely they're going to think. We know what they're going to do. So it's just like, that's just what it is. So we just focus on, okay, how can we do this better? Like, how can I not miss this read? How can we get off the sideline faster and stuff like that? It, that's 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 really simply it. If we just execute what coach calls and do the right thing, he gives us the tools to make every play right almost. So if we're able to do that at a high level, then it's going to be hard to stop. Shador, Ariel Orsudo, 9 News. Um, what have you learned about this rivalry with Nebraska since you've been here? And like, who's kind of taught you about it? Um, what has the team taken from it? And what are you really looking forward to in this game, specifically on Saturday? Don't wear red in the facility. And I got to take the red shirt off my website for my clothes this week. I got to make that call when I get locker room. So that, that's really, that's really, we just know the history of it. Colorado, we don't like Nebraska. Simple. So that's just what it is. We just got to focus on that. Okay, cool. We don't like Nebraska, but that's not going to, that's not really going to change like the preparation or anything like that because we prepare like, Nobody likes this because we know we're going to get everybody's best game. So it's just another thing on top of, like, a little bit more motivation, just a little bit. But we got to already be motivated off rip. Hey, Shador, you told us in the off season that uh, you are going to have too much time to prepare for TCU, and we saw what happened. Now it's a little bit of a different challenge. How do you personally and Coach Lewis microwave that process having less time this, this time around? I would say I just understand the scheme. I really like learning and understand, like, the coaches and their schemes and stuff like that, and understand, you know, what trees they come from and stuff like that. So it's really just being a student, knowing this week, okay, cool, we're not going to have as, as much time as we had. So now a lot of time gets cut out. Like, a lot of time it's more focused on just watching football, 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 different teams that run the same scheme, different um, – prior games that I played in the past that run a similar scheme, stuff like that, understanding their players and really knowing them intimately. So that's really it. They got a lot of talented players. They got good D linemen. They got good backers. They got good DBs. So it's like just being very – just understanding what, what we got on the table, understanding what they got. Hey, Shooter, Carlos Bryant, DSM. <clears throat> What did you talk about the fourth down, fourth and two? You were down by seven. What was going through your mind? And how much does your work with Tom Brady impact those serious, stressful moments in the game? All right. I'm going to answer the first question, and you got to ask the second one again. <laughs> All right. So the fourth and two, it's like I know everybody. I'm up there. I'm like, I'm like fourth and two, dang. So then I know everybody's feeling like, dang, what are they going to do right here? And I'm in my head, like, 
dang, it's fourth and two. But I've been there before, you know, so it's like this is not my first fourth and two game on the line situation. So I'm like, okay, execute the play call. That's it. If that ain't there, then extend the play, do something, make it happen. But, like, I'm human too, so how y'all feel, y'all be like, dang, it's fourth and two, what's going to happen? Like, on the third and 16 with Trav, it was like, find a one-on-one, -on -one, find the best matchup, and put it there, and that's it. So, fourth and two is like, ain't no way we losing this game. It don't matter what's going on. If that throw ain't there, we going to get it some way, somehow. Like, we're not going out like that. So, that's it. It impacts it a lot because um, fourth and two, it's not a big pressure situation to me because every down, every down you should treat it the same like it's a high pressure situation, like games on the line because you don't know when the plays could dictate the game. You don't know which down, what it could be, interception, fumble, anything like that. So every play is a seriousness it has to me. That's just more serious because, okay, game on the line. But to me, every play is a serious. But working with Tom, it was just talking to him and understanding, okay, how to improve each week. Uh, he texts me after the game, don't be satisfied. <laughs> like, it's cool. So it was cool hearing from him, knowing he's still watching and stuff like that. But just working with him, it really helped me just understand, don't focus on the good things. We did that. that that's, that's night and day. We're going to do that regardless. Focus on the bad things. Focus on the things that we wasn't able to do at a high level. So improve that, then you got a full armor everywhere. But if you just focus on the good, the the, the things in the light, knowing okay, Dylan had um, a lot of receiving yards, but it's okay, Dylan on this one route, you gotta you gotta make this decision. So it's just really just like highlighting the the, the bad things that we did and watching that over and over and over, and giving us that bad feeling like we can't make that same mistake. Two more, go ahead, Shadur, uh, Pat Graham, so share press. Um, congratulations. Um, when you're at the center of the college universe like you guys are right now and you've had the week that you did, how do you stay grounded? How do you stay humble? Or is, do you not want to stay grounded and humble? Do you want to just I don't know, celebrate the moment? I mean, this ain't my first time here. We, we had it at Jackson. It was just now it's just a bigger stage, bigger level to where it's on ESPN and TV all the time, like all day. But I don't, I don't really – I'm off social media. Not too many people have, have my phone number. Um, the one I really keep with me. So it's like I don't I don't see none of that stuff honestly. I don't I don't watch TV at home. Like we put, probably put on YouTube, watch full games or something here and there, like game film. But that's it. When I don't really, I'm not I'm disconnected from that type of stuff because I know what it could lead to. I know what it could lead to. So that's why I always reference like my past because I feel like like God put me in a position to where I went through all these trials and everything in my prior years and stuff in college and understand the different situations and everything that I'm going to go through to prepare me for this year. So now it's just it's just regular. I don't really have no feeling towards anything. Hey, Shador. Uh, Tony Casolo, Buffalo's Wire. You, you talk about that human element or the motions of the game. Can you give us a little sneak peek? What's going through your mind trying to watch the defense seal the game for you guys last weekend? Really, it's just me talking to the O-line. Yes, I'm not watching the defense. I I just I just don't like watching because I don't I don't I feel like when I watch they may some may happen so I just don't watch so then I just I just get the guys together and tell them like hey bro we're gonna have to have another drive we're gonna get it bro ain't no way we losing this game so it's really like a real intimate moment with the O line and that's where I feel like that's I feel like that's the my highlight of the game is really being able to look those guys in the eyes and know like they got my back and we're all there mentally we're all there knowing that. No matter what happens, we're going to go there, drive down the field, we're going to score. We got to have another one, another one, another one. So however things played out, mentally we was ready. So that's really, that's really our main mindset, I'll say offensively, and no one just, no matter what, if they're doing good, if they're doing bad, they don't, that shouldn't affect us. We should have the want to to score every drive that we can. And if we don't, then we kind of failed ourselves. Appreciate it.